Hi, I'm Hadi. In this series of video, I am talking about the gradient as one of the most important aspects of how laser in a mine. In the previous video, part 1, we reviewed some basics, considerations, and common practices about what and how ramp gradient must be. I introduced four references for you to more investigate thoughts about this topic by yourselves. In this video, part 2, I am going to show the functionality of three of the most common GMPs in the industry in measuring and analyzing ramp gradients. The GMPs I am going to take some examples into them and evaluate the ramping system on the basis of its ramp gradients are Vulcan, Desvicad and Serpac. Before starting auditing a mine design on the basis of its ramp gradient, you should know what the traffic rules are. First of all, you must know one or two way traffic is considered for this ramping system. There are lots of cases where the mine planner has considered one way segments of a ramping system instead of two way ramps. Next is the number of lanes. Knowing the number of lanes assumed in defining the ramps width would help you correctly judge the viability of a mine design. Traffic direction also is very important. The very basic parameter is the traffic direction. Is it a left hand or right hand traffic? It suggests which side the loaded truck is traveling and where the unloaded truck moves on. I'm going to assess all the examples in this video based on the assumption that the traffic direction is right hand. That means for the vehicles that the wheel is on the left. For left hand direction, the story would be different. And the last thing you must know about the philosophy that the mind planner has taken into consideration when designing uh, the pit uh, design you are evaluating is speed limits. Limits set the mine's internal safety or the country's domestic regulations must take it into consideration when assessing the ramp design. You may need to check the truck nominal payload and its speed against the gradient. To do so, refer to the previous video in this series part 1 about truck performance curves. Now let's start with Vulcan. This design is not created by Vulcan. It's created by Datamine Studio 3. I imported it here to make use of the handy tools in Vulcan. Zooming in to the bottom of this pit, I'm going to evaluate the ramp gradient from bottom to top. This is an anti-clockwise ramp. And as I said, taking into consideration that the traffic is right hand, the loaded truck will climb on the outer edge of this ramping system. Instead of using the typical and simple tools for measuring between two points or along a segment, I'm going to use more handy tools in order to faster and better evaluate the gradient. I'm using this menu to label the gradient on each segment. There are other labels options for these objects and I am choosing gradients in persons and one decimal is enough. I am choosing only the ramp segment for our instruction only these three are enough and you can see that how the ramp gradient varies when the loaded truck climbs up or the unloaded truck 
descends down the ramp systems in these three segments. In a general look, you will notice that uh, the mind planner or designer has decided to fix the ramp gradient on the inner edge of the ramp when he was designing this pit design because uh, all of the points on uh, this inner uh, edge are all exactly 8% and uh, the reason that the outer edge uh, gradient uh, is uh, varying from 7.2 to also here we have more than 9% is that uh, because of uh, the change in the curvature of the ramp when it goes around the walls. Oh, also you see here that we have uh, gradients very very low than 7, 4 as well as 5 percent. The important issue that we notice in this example in these three benches is that the longitudinal profile for the loaded truck as it's running on the outer edge of the ramp is varying in a long range from very low numbers 4.8 to even more than 9% and that is against the rule of the thumb we discussed in the previous video part 1 that was the optimum gradient for the ramp is that one that is constant and even in such situation another thing is that the ramp distance or I better say generally the haulage distance is elongated especially for the loaded truck we assume that there is uh, no seasonal limitation for uh, the speed and uh, it can travel uh, in 8 or even up to 10 percent gradient so there is no need or no benefits in lowering the ramp gradient in the loaded side if we fix the basis of the ramp gradient that is eight percent for the other edge of the ramp the ramp length the haulage length will be shortened as you follow from the bottom bench the outer edge always is less than the inner edge uh, because of the form of curvature but here because of uh, this uh, curve on the wall you see that the outer edge is uh, working uh, in opposite and uh, the gradient for the loaded truck is uh, exceeding 8% to even more than 9% I don't know if uh, this uh, curvature in these two walls these two benches are necessary or not it's the mine planner's decision but uh, if they are necessary uh, we must uh, fix our uh, uh, ramp uh, gradient uh, design criteria on the outer edge, not on the inner edge. Now let's take a look on another example, but this time in Deswig. I created this design by Deswig's Autopit Design module. That you will find is under this menu. I've used two scenarios and uh, compared several cases to find the best uh, option in terms of uh, volume matching the pitch shell as well as the minimum ramping uh, length and haulage distance. In this scenario 
the two bottom benches have a single way ramps because the traffic and the amount of volume material that must be mined from these benches are very limited compared to the top benches so as you see the ramp width is less than and the rest of the ramping system for these two bottom benches i have two options in this week to analyze very fast and efficiently the gradients along segment lines i can label them or make annotations for the gradients along each segments to consequent points on a line you can define a rule here to show gradient in person there are other data you can choose from and uh, with, uh, defining the font size and color and the position uh, till to show on the selected segment but because i am going to extract these uh, gradient labels or i better say annotations to another uh, software package for example uh, cat autocad uh, i'd better uh, create annotations rather than labels there is an option for gradient changes uh, to be drawn on the on a separate layer uh, for uh, gradient changes I may name it uh, annotations or gradient to better represent what I am I creating and this window pops up there are lots of options for better placing and showing the annotation the data you want to be displayed uh, as annotation in a different layer from data i choose uh, percentage uh, and i want to limit it to only the selected entities that is the segment for uh, this uh, the ramp uh, passing through this bench and simply by applying you will see that uh, not only the gradient is shown uh, in this label in this uh, layer separate layer you can turn it on and off uh, there is an arrow scaled by the gradient uh, amount the gradient uh, value and also showing the uh, sign of the gradient which is uh, negative or positive uh, you will notice that uh, it's wrongly negative on the other edge uh, and uh, we assume that uh, our traffic is uh, right-handed and the loaded truck is uh, climbing up on the other edge this is because uh, the algorithm of the auto pit design doesn't take into consideration the ramp uh, the traffic direction and uh, this segment is uh, clockwise if it was uh, anti-clockwise i mean the order of the points as we are dealing with in surpack more clearly uh, we could uh, skip or i better say the mind planner could uh, skip this uh, minor issue when he was designing in surpack the benefit to create annotations in a separate layer is that you can export it to, to CAD file or any CAD based file extensions uh, you would like to analyze in another software package. And finally, let's uh, look at uh, another example, but this time in Serpec. When designing in Serpec, it creates the two both segments for the ramp uh, in two separate uh, segments so it will uh, help time sometimes uh, to uh, better analyze and easier analyze the ramp gradient again like uh, Vulcan and 
and uh, this week I don't want to use uh, the simple tools for inquiring uh, segment properties or bearing and distance and in Serpike instead I want to use uh, a string math I've changed the style for this layer, for this file as the basis for my all design so that the crest and the two segments and the strings are uniquely colored and I can better distinguish and present my uh, ramp segments by uh, this tool I want to calculate the ramp gradient and uh, set it in the first uh, description field of only a string ranges uh, of 100 that is if I show you my uh, ramp segments are in a string number 100 most of them so I will limit this calculation only to string ranges of 100 and by this function prev slope we will get the slope of the distance between one point to its previous point along the segment in percentage but uh, I also want it to be shown only in one decimal the description field number one is set for all of the points on string number 100 and uh, it's displayed uh, beside each point you can easily evaluate and uh, verify where uh, if the ramp gradient is uh, correct uh, considering your traffic rules or not in this example, the ramp uh, design criteria is set uh, to the outer edge of the ramp. Uh, as you see, it's again 8%, and uh, almost all of the points along the outer edge are 8% exactly, but uh, along the corners and curves, it will increase uh, in the side that the unloaded truck is descending down the pit but if you want to look more closer you will see that uh, even uh, on the inner edge the unloaded truck has the retarding performance curve of the truck's uh, the basis We'll see that uh, there is uh, no much high and uh, very excessive uh, gradient in this side except only this corner that should be fixed. Alright, I hope that uh, in this video you uh, get the idea about the functionality of uh, these three general mining packages, uh, work on this week and uh, surf hack and how to evaluate it and you can export the description fields even into a spreadsheet excel or csv file by saving this layer instead of a string in a text extension file text file but remember that file format also should be set onto text and this text file I uh, will uh, comprise uh, all of these description fields for string number 100 so you can uh, plot it or uh, make any diagram depending on what your representation needs.